right, so uh, we're back at it again. Uh, you know, working on um, working on coloring this Legacy Saga page. Like I said, working again, working with the Spectrum, more my Spectrum Noir markers, uh, some Prisma colors. Um, yeah, trying to uh, trying to establish. Uh, Establish my profile, man, uh, as far as, you know, what colors I want to use, how I want to kind of move through. Um, you know. like I said, uh, the unique and interesting part about this whole situation is figuring it out as, you know, figuring it out as I go through it. So, um, if for some reason you think there is a, you know, there's a predetermined, you know, scheme or method to the madness, I would just like to point out to you now, um, other than I kind of got a feeling for ultimately what I want it to look like, uh, that's about it, you know, um, and the cool part about, like I said, doing this, this is on, uh, vellum paper, the thing, the cool part about doing this, the way that I'm doing it, um, uh, one, it's, it's a neat exercise for me, um, uh, lets me play with some color palette things, uh, not sure that this is going to be um the actual way i go about coloring legacy saga uh may let's say i may still do it uh digitally um i'm thinking i will but you know, i said who knows do a couple of these and see how they work out you know uh especially if i get some feedback from you guys uh you know let me know what you think um you know you you feel in the way that uh that these pages look you know and, and is this possibly you know uh what you you know would consider good to go as far as hey i want this is how i would like to see legacy solid saga color uh definitely makes it old school man uh like 100 percent old school um i definitely not trying to do hand lettering now uh I, my grammar is horrible my written grammar is horrible um and my spelling is worse uh so uh, definitely want to you know put in something that's going to be easy to easy to edit uh, on that regard uh, so like I said it's a couple different things the the sky color is, is held over from uh, from the first page I did uh, like I said was kind of guessing at what I wanted that to look like and like I said I kind of like the the purple sky mm. to me adds more of a otherworldly element to things uh, you know uh, and you know at least for these first couple of pages you know it'll give a little bit of uh, consistency in, uh, in context like I said because you know, as you can tell at this stage uh, he's kind of maybe you can't well he's kind of in a strange place uh for him he doesn't he doesn't know where he is uh he's trying to orientate himself uh to the new animals and things that are around um trying to figure out what's going on with my uh, uh yeah trying to figure out what's going on with my uh sounds here oh, okay must have ran out of videos um hmm, what season is this all right so all right now we're going through season two soundtrack for background music uh so should be should be interesting all right let me finish getting this sky in here because that's going to be that's kind of important it's the biggest biggest single swat i got on on all three panels and then i'll go back in and you know start filling up the rest of the colors and whatnot it's funny because now thinking about it and i don't know that i put don't know that i put all that much effort or thought into it um when i was making my panels uh, pretty much almost all my panels are you know that's that's my hand and a uh, pencil brush it's not like um it's not uh you know not much of a straight edge uh in any of my panels uh, other than what I could do manufacture with just my hand uh, and now that I'm coloring it you know it gives it a real 
to me it gives it a real coloring bookish uh, feel like you know with the line weight some of them like really thick um, so it makes it interesting now that I'm you know uh, sitting here and, and coloring these lines uh, it's actually pretty cool um, or at least it is to me so don't necessarily know how you guys feel about it but it's, it's pretty cool to me um, I'm thinking it's uh, pretty dope so make sure I'm not, yeah. yeah it's pretty dope yeah I'm playing with a couple of different uh, textures to get the skin tone that I want uh, if you hadn't figured out you know uh, the person that you see the most and you'll see most I mean the character that you've seen the most is the fallen king um, and uh, for lack of a for lack of a better term, just to keep it real, Fallen King is is black. You know, he is a uh, is a person of color. Uh, you know, this will be you know this will be at least one um, you know fantasy story out there um, where black people or you know people of color are not a not an anomaly or some you know ancient race to come in and you know. Ooh, just teach you the secrets of our race because we failed and hopefully you get it and no um, yeah, I think um, as you know as the fantasy portion of it goes my story is how I would hope a lot of um, metropolitan I mean a lot of science fiction would be it's more metropolitan it's you know more reflective of the fact that um, they're going to be all types of, you know, different, you know, colored people, races, um, you know, I really want to, you know, for as much as I've been influenced by, uh, you know, the medieval representation and um, fantasy and sci-fi to some extent, I uh, want to kind of broaden that uh, to where, you know, that's not the only representation out there. Because uh, there's definitely more than just, you know, Europeans and whatnot um, that do, um, you know, the settings are stale. Yeah, I, I don't know I don't know any other way to say it. I'm just going to keep it real. The, the settings are stale. Um, they have been um, for a while, you know. Uh, that's not the only source of reference to pull from. There's so much other things in rich culture. I mean, there, yeah, there are going to be some things that are familiar. There are going to be some um, things that are familiar uh, to those who, you know, are familiar with the, you know, medieval-esque tropes and uh, fantasy. But there's also going to be some things that, um, you know, are reflective of me as, you know, being black and, you know, person, you know, African descent, part of the uh, diaspora, as they call it, uh, or as it is, not as they call it. Um, but then there are going to be some stuff that, that 100% comes solely from out of my head, uh, which, you know, means nobody's ever seen it, and, you know, hey, it, might, it may not even make sense to anybody else, but that's a cool part about um, doing a fantasy story, sat in a fantasy place, um, you know, you can really, you know, you can really just let yourself go in a lot of regards, you know, there's some things that, you know, you can do, uh, and you can create your own rules, you know, you basically, you know, the thing I like is, you know, you are and become a master of the universe, master of your universe. Uh, you know, and as a creator, I think that's what we all kind of strive for. Um, you know, I don't know anyone who creates comic books who wants to just solely, you know, draw existing titles. I'm, I'm, if you know, if that's you and you're out there, that's great. But I think every comic book creator, you know, somewhere down deep, you know, places where they may not even talk about, um, we all want to create, you know, our own characters, our own places, our own worlds. Um, you know, for me, it's something I've always done as a kid. You know, that was it. You know, we always, you know, I always made my own stories. You know, because you know, sometimes, you know, I just, they, I just didn't fit in any of the other stories. So, well, that's my timer there, folks. So let me know. I'm